Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my presentation. This is Sridham Yes, one of the senior product managers at Syncfusion Chennai. If you're not aware of Syncfusion earlier, uh, we are a UI vendor component, component vendor, and we have a stall outside. Please do come and visit us. So I guess that's enough promotions. Let's now dive into the topic. So security has become an integral part of every application that we develop or use today. Hence, we'll be looking at the security aspect in Angular applications today, covering the common attacks that an Angular application can face and its built-in protections against them and the best practices that we can follow. So this session is basically split into three sections, namely the best practices that we need to follow, what are HTTP level vulnerabilities and cross-site scripting and how to prevent them. So we will st start with the best practices. So the practices that I'm going to suggest now is from an Angular framework point of view. So first, keep current with the latest Angular library releases. So basically, Angular libraries get periodic updates, which might have fixes for security defects that were like available in the previous versions. Do not alter the copy of your Angular. Private customized versions of Angular tend to fall behind with the recent versions. And if you want to provide your improvements to the community, please do that via pull request. And finally, avoid Angular APIs that are marked in the document as a security risk. We'll move to the next section, which is HTTP level vulnerabilities. So Angular has built in protections to mitigate two common HTTP level vulnerabilities, namely cross-site request forgery and cross-site script inclusion. So these attacks must be primarily mitigated on the server side. But yes, Angular does provide helpers to make client-side integrations easier. We will just check regarding cross-site request forgery, which is one of the most common HTTP level vulnerability. So what is CSRF or XSRF? So in a CSRF attack, an attacker, he just tricks you to open a web page with some malignant code. So what this web page does is that it sends a malicious request to your web server's web application server. So you'll just see that with a flow over here. So here, a user has successfully logged in to his banking application. In the meantime, he receives a mail from a user who he thinks is a legitimate user and he clicks on a link in that. So what this does is that it opens a malicious website in the same browser in a new tab. And now this particular website sends a malicious request to the banking application server. As you can see over here. So what happens now? So this request can be anything. It, it can be to get the user's data or send amount from the user's account to the attacker's account. In this case, the banking application server does not know whether this request originated from a legitimate website or a forged website. So the request succeeds, as you can see over here. So in an anti-CSRF CSR, technique, what we need to do is we need to make sure that the application server knows that this request comes from a legitimate website or not. So next we will have a look at the role of Angular's HTTP client in preventing CSRF. So CSRF must be mitigated both by the server and the client. What a server does is that it sends a randomly generated token in a cookie to the client. Now comes the role of Angular's HTTP client. So as you can see over here, the server has sent a token in a cookie, which is an anti-CSRF token. And Angular HTTP client, what it does is that it follows a common mechanism to prevent CSRF. So what when, when we perform a HTTP request, what happens is that an interceptor automatically reads a token in a cookie and sets it as a HTTP header. So in this case, after that, the server is responsible to compare the values and reject or approve a request. Since the code in the domain can only read the cookie, the server in this case would be like very confident that this request came from the banking's client application and not from any forged website. So what will happen in this case when an attacker sends a malicious request? So as you can see over here, it fails. Since the server knows the difference between the banking website's request and a forged request. The next HTTP level vulnerability that we will be seeing is related to cross-site type inclusion. So what is this? 
So it is an attack where the attacker's website reads JSON data from an API. So what server needs to do is that it prefixes all JSON responses to make them non-executable using the string that you see on the screen. So here, Angular's HTTP client library, it does know this convention and it strips the string in all the requests, that is the JSON responses, before further passing. So that's with respect to the HTTP level vulnerabilities. And next we'll move on to the final section and the most important one, which is preventing, <coughs> one second, yeah, cross-site scripting. So we'll just have a look at Angular's built-in mechanisms to prevent cross-site scripting. But first, we will just discuss what cross-site scripting is about. So in cross-site scripting, an attacker injects malicious code into your web page. So this code, what it can do is, it can steal user's data or perform functions that impersonates the user. This is one of the most common attacks on the web. So this attack, for it to be prevented, we need to make sure that malicious code does not enter into your application's web page DOM. So this can be done by, an, by the attacker using a script tag and anchor tag, the href property of an anchor tag, so and so on. So first we will look at sanitization security context from Angular. Okay, what is sanitization? So sanitization is inspection of an untrusted value and turn it into a value that's like safe to be inserted into the DOM. So by default, Angular's security model, what it does is that it does not trust any value. So it considers all values as untrusted by default. When you try to inject that is a um, value into the DOM by either interpolation or HTML binding, what it does is that it automatically sanitizes and escapes untrusted values and keeps only the safe values intact. We will see that with a code example over here. So here we have a string HTML snippet which consists of three sections namely a normal text, a text within bold tags and a content inside a script tag. So we consider this to be a malicious code since an attacker uses this particular script to inject security vulnerabilities. So what happens is that we are trying to bind this particular value into the HTML using two methods. The first one is interpolating into an elements content and the second one is binding to in a HTML. So first I'll do the interpolation. In Angular, by default what happens is that it does not interpret HTML when a content is interpolated. So as you can see over here, once I complete the interpolation, the text is like rendered as it is without any interpretation. So there's no conversion of the HTML values. But when I bind to the inner HTML property of an element, what happens is that Angular automatically sanitizes this value. It escapes untrusted values and keeps only the safe values intact and renders them. So here I'm just binding it. So as you can see, only the normal text and the text inside the bold tag are rendered properly. Whereas the content inside the script tag is not rendered because Angular considers them unsafe by default. This is the content, yeah. So hope uh, this example would have like um, explained sanitization well, Angular sanitization. With respect to sanitization, we do have security context to be like discussed. So sanitization depends on context. So what does that mean? A value in a URL can be like harmful, but it might not be uh, very much harmful in a CSS property. So the various security contexts that are like available in Angular are HTML style, URL and resource URL. So basically Angular sanitizes automatically HTML style and URL properties, but sanitizing resource URLs isn't possible because it might contain arbitrary code. So the next prevention technique is trusting safe values. So on a general note, we just need to avoid directly interacting with the DOM and use Angular templates. In the previous section, what we saw was Angular's automatic sanitization. But there are cases where we need to tell Angular or we need to use Angular uh, values that we consider safe, but Angular does not know this is like safe. So in that case, what we need to do? We need to tell Angular that we know the origin of this particular value and we know it does not create any security attacks and we know its value. We only created it. 
So what we need to do in such a case is that or a from a coding point of view, we need to inject the DOM sanitizer and call one of the following methods based on the security context. So again, we'll have a look at this with an example code. So here we have like uh, two URLs, one is a dangerous URL and one is a trusted URL. But as of now, both have the same values. Both are dangerous as of now. And we try to bind this to HTML, two different contents. And when I click both the links, what happens is that both are disabled because Angular does not trust this particular URL. Now I try to turn this trusted URL into an actual safe value. As you can see over here, the DOM sanitizer has, has already been like initialized and I use the sanitizers from a URL context point of view. I use the bypass security trust URL method and I tell Angular that this value is safe and I know its origin. So now when I run the application, what happens is that and I click the and I, and I click both the links, the untrusted URL or the dangerous URL will not work fine, but the trusted URL will work as expected. So this is with respect to trusting safe values. Next, we'll have a general discussion about what are the other techniques by which we can like prevent cross-site scripting. We can like enforce trust trusted types that prevents cross-site scripting by enforcing safer coding practices. We can use the AOT template compiler to prevent injection attacks. And finally, we must not create Angular templates in the server side using a template language. So this summarizes the various built-in mechanisms to prevent cross-site scripting. And that completes my session of uh, discussing about the security aspects in Angular applications. So hope you had a great time listening and thank you.